Hello class, welcome to this video on the uh, calculus series. So we're on lesson 11, the uh, chain rule. So um, let's look at an example so, uh, of the chain rule. So uh, here we have a function sine x to the fifth. And we want to take the derivative of this with respect to x. Now if you um, did this you know, in a way that you, know, you tried to do it intuitively, you might say that, OK, well, the derivative of sine is cosine, right? And so you might say that this is cosine of x to the fifth. Makes sense, right? However, that x to the fifth um, does make a difference. That fifth power there does make a difference in the derivative. And so um, you would expect that it would be cosine of x to the fifth, but it's actually not the case. All right, so in order to take the derivative of something like this, we need the chain rule. So remember that the derivative of a uh, function is given by this definition, the limit definition, right? Uh, we've done this before. Um, and so if we apply that here, well then f of x is sine of x to the fifth, right? That's the function. And if I plug that in, it's going to be sine of x plus five or x plus h to the fifth power minus sine of x to the fifth, okay? Um, so remember, this is where we plug in the x plus h into this, right? Into x. Um, and there's our derivative. There's our limit definition. So we're going to work with this to see if we can come up with the derivative, the actual derivative of sine of x to the fifth. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to multiply by this um, fraction, okay? Remember, this fraction is just 1, so it doesn't really change anything to the derivative, right, or the limit. But we're going to multiply by essentially this part right here, okay, the sine of x plus a, or the x plus h to the fifth, and then minus x to the fifth. And we're going to do that top and bottom. And you're going to see why we do that in, in a second, shortly. Okay, so we're just going to multiply by that part without the sign, okay? And um, so again, doesn't change anything to the limit. And then we're going to rearrange a few things. So uh, we're going to, um, essentially, we're going to do is we're going to move this, we're going to swap uh, h and then that um, denominator. And by doing that, now we got two different limits. We're going to distribute this limit here and here, of course. So now we got a limit for this first fraction, a limit for the second fraction, okay? So um, now we got this limit here is the derivative, right? This is the um, limit definition, but this is the derivative of x to the fifth power. And so we're going to rewrite that as the derivative of x to the fifth power. Now this part um, we're going to need to do a little bit of work on, okay? So we're going to say let the letter, let eta, this is the Greek letter eta, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but that's what I end up calling it. So let eta equals to x plus h to the fifth minus x to the fifth. Essentially what we multiplied here. So we multiply by eta over eta, right? So, um, so let eta be that. Um, and then let's do the limit as h approaches zero of that. Well then if I do that, then this goes to zero and then x to the fifth power minus x to the fifth power is zero. And so we can say that the limit as eta approaches zero of eta, obviously it's going to be zero because if I plug in zero into this, I get zero. So we're going to say that this is equivalent to this, right? Because we get zero with both cases. In this case, it's going to be zero. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take that little, we're going to take advantage of this fact that this is zero um, in order to um, substitute that in. So we're going to replace this h approaches zero with eta approaches zero, okay? Um, so that's what we end up doing. And we're going to replace this with eta, of course. So that gets replaced with eta. This gets replaced. Um, now this part, the x plus 5 to the uh, x to the fifth plus eta. So well, since we know that eta is x plus h to the fifth minus x to the fifth, right? Since I know that that's the case. Well, if I were to uh, solve for, if I were to move the x to the fifth over, then I can say that x plus h to the fifth is equal to eta plus, or x to the fifth plus eta, which is exactly uh, what I substituted in here, okay? So that's how I got that, because I wanted to replace this, right? So that's why I did that, all right? So now we got those replaced, and then uh, we're gonna say let u equals x to the fifth all right, let me erase all this stuff because you know, so we don't have too many things in the way. But let u equals x to the fifth. So now we're going to replace this with u, right? Um, and we know, or or not not this part. I'm sorry. We're going to replace uh, this here with u. Anything that's x to the fifth, we're going to replace with u. 
and then so this and this get replaced. So we have that here and here. And um, now it just looks simpler, right? This part, um, uh, this part right here, it looks simpler. So we can just do the limit of that. And like I said earlier, this is the derivative of x to the fifth power. So again, this gets replaced with the derivative of x to the fifth power right here. And then um, notice that this is a derivative as well. So notice that we got this as a derivative because you have a difference quotient here, right? Sine of x plus h minus sine of x over h, right? Eta is sort of like our new h, right? Um, so it's a derivative but with respect to u. The u is the, the, fun, uh, the derivative, um, you know, the variable that we're differentiating. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Um, so now we got essentially a working um, you know, a working derivative for this, right? A working formula for this. So the derivative of the sine is cosine, and then the derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth, again, using the power rule for that. And we can replace u with x to the fifth. So, because uh, remember we said that u is x to the fifth, so we replace that back again. Um, and then now we got everything in terms of x, and that is the derivative. So the derivative of sine of x to the fifth is not cosine of x to the fifth, but it's cosine of x to the fifth 5x to the fourth. So notice we take the derivative of, we take the derivative like we normally would, which is cosine of x, and then the fifth is there, and then we take the derivative of the inside, and that gives us the 5x to the fourth. All right? Well, that's how you use the chain rule. That's known as the chain rule. So uh, again, going back to what we did, it's the derivative of the, the main part of the function, which is the, the meat of the function is, x to, is sine of x right? In this case, sine of u because u is x to the fifth. So we make a substitution and call it sine of u, take the derivative of that, and then we take the derivative of u, okay? So in other words, um, the derivative with respect to x of sine of u, where u is a function of x, is the derivative of, you know, obviously it's the derivative of sine of u times the derivative of u. Right? And this is a function of x, or u is a function of x. Okay, and, and then obviously the, the u is, is a function of x, right? So that, so, oh, so let me erase that now. So uh, we're, in this case, y is um, sine of u, so we can replace this with y, and we can replace this with u, right? And so we can say, oh, it's just dy du, du dx, right? So it's just going to be dy du, which that, that's this part, and then du dx is this part. And this is the chain rule, okay? So the chain rule is that the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u, and then the derivative of u with respect to x. And notice that these kind of cancel out and leave you with dy dx, okay? We, I say cancel out in quotations because it's not really like canceling out, but it's a way to help you remember that, you know, if you were to think of these as just fractions that you manipulate, they cancel out um, and then give you the, um, the derivative that you want, okay? But again, this is not true in general. When you get to multivariable calculus, this is not going to be something that you want that is true in general, but um, it's still a good uh, guideline to kind of show you, oh yeah, these kind of, in, in a sense, they cancel out and then give you the derivative, okay? So this is the chain rule. This is the basis of the chain rule right here. And we're going to expound on this further. So the chain rule is used for composite functions where you have a, a substitution. You have a variable in there, a, a, a function within a function. So in the case of sine of x to the fifth, this here is a function. It's a function of x, right? But it's within this function, which we can call g of x, right? Which is sine of x to the fifth. So it's a function within a function. So in this case, this is sort of like g of f of x, uh, where g of x is, a, is equal to sine of x, okay? So it's used for composite functions, where in this case, this is sort of like my u of x, right? So, for example, like we were just saying, that f of u of x is equal to sine of x to the fifth, where u of x is x to the fifth. Okay, so let's do an informal proof of the chain rule, but this time we're going to do it with composition, right? f of g of x. Um, this would normally be like your f of u, right? Uh, so let's take the derivative of that. So uh, remember, the, using the limit definition, it's going to be uh, f of g of x plus h, right? Because we've got to put the x plus h into this x right here, uh, minus the original f of g of x over h. 
and then we're going to multiply by this portion like we did earlier in the other example, right? That's that's going to be my eta, right? This is going to be my eta. Um, and so top and bottom by that, and then we're going to switch these two. And when we switch those two, we end up getting a derivative. So this right here turns into g prime of x, okay? That's the derivative of g of x, right? But that's the definition of the derivative. Now this one we got to we got to do a little bit more with it, but um, you know just to kind of see it more clearly. So let eta equal to the you know what we multiplied by earlier, top and bottom. And again, like we did, we're going to take the limit as h approaches zero of eta. But if we know that this is eta, if this is zero, then this goes away, and g of x minus g of x is zero, right? If we do the limit. Uh, so that means that it's the same thing as if I plug in zero for eta, that's going to give me zero. So we can replace the h with the eta. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to replace um, the h here with eta. This should be an eta right here instead of an h. Um, and then again, we're going we're gonna to say we're going to use this equation, the eta equation, and we're going to solve for g of x plus h. So g of x plus h is eta plus g of x. So we're going to replace that. We're going we're gonna to replace this g of x here with g of x plus plus eta, which is what I have there, okay? That's how I got all that stuff, all right? Um, okay, I'm gonna leave some room just for, for the next uh, few parts, for, for next few steps. So like we said, this, this is the g prime, and then um, this here is a derivative now. You can see it's a derivative. It's sort of like f of x plus h minus f of x, right? over h, if you think of this eta as your h. So it's the same structure. So it's a derivative, but it's a derivative of g of x on the inside. Okay, so there's your informal proof of the chain rule. You can also rewrite this um, as f prime of u, where u is g of x, so we're just replacing g of x with u, right? Uh, and then g prime is gonna be u prime, the derivative of u, right? Uh, or you can write it as dy du, this is the same thing as dy du, and then this is the same thing as du dx, okay? Um, so there you go. All right, so here's the, uh, the formal definition of the chain rule. We did sort of like an informal proof, you know, just going to kind of convince you. But if y is equal to f of u is a differentiable function where u is a function, another function of x, right, where it's a composition of functions when put together, is another differentiable function of x, then y is equal to f of g of x is also differentiable, and its derivative is given by the chain rule. dy dx equals dy du, that function of x, times the derivative of that function of x with respect to x, and you multiply the two, okay? Uh, or equivalently, you got this. You can also rewrite this as f prime of u, g prime, and then times u prime, right? Same thing. Uh, the chain rule can be also called the composite function rule. The reason why it's called the chain rule is you can think of it as chaining derivatives, right? You're doing the derivative of the original and then times the derivative of the inside, okay? So this is sort of like the derivative of the original and then the derivative of the inside, okay? Derivative of the original times the derivative of the inside. So you're chaining derivatives by multiplying them from outer to inner. So I guess I could call this original or outer. Okay? All right, so here's an intuitive notion of the chain rule. You might, you, you might be familiar with the idea of, you know, having, um, you know, gears, right? Like gears being put together, like cogs. Um, or like, for example, you know, when you have a belt um, tied around, you know, some, you know, like a pulley system almost, like, you know, tied around, you know, these, these um, shafts. Right. Um, well, that actually illustrates the chain rule. So you can see that as you're chaining this belt from one to another, the derivatives, the speeds of those multiply to get the speed of the one afterwards. OK, so so we'll, we'll show you what this means in a second. So in order to derive this, uh, we're going to you know do some mathematics here. But we know that the velocity of a wheel, so if you see this part rotating, you know, this is rotating like that. So if you see that rotating, well, the, what's that? What's the speed at which it's rotating? Well, the speed, remember, is distance over time, right? 
and the distance around a circle, it's traveling around the circle, right, around that shaft there, uh, or the wheel or whatever, and um, it's traveling at, well, the distance is 2 pi times the radius, right? So it's traveling a full circle, that's the circumference of a circle, right, 2 pi times the radius. Uh, divided by the time that it takes to travel that. That's the speed, right, that it travels around. And that's true for all of these wheels. So um, we're going to do this for uh, the, uh, the U wheel and the X wheel. So if we do that, we get 2 pi R to over T for both sides. But notice the difference is that the radius of the wheels are different and the time that it travels is different for each wheel, right, because some wheels travel faster than others, right? So uh, but we know that the velocities have to be equal, right? Even though the radius is different and the t and the and the um, the times are different, right? We know that the um, velocity. Um, we know that the the belt here, this belt that's traveling around, right, has a constant velocity. the the belt The belt doesn't change velocity, right? The belt around it. When they when they when you join those wheels together, even though the wheels individually move at different speeds, overall, right? When you look at the the belt, the belt is traveling, you know, at the same velocity throughout, right? Uh, when you chain them together, so we're going to say that the velocities are essentially equal, even though they they're, they're different radii, but the time that that they travel is also different, and so that kind of makes up for that. And so, you know, we're just going to say it's 2 pi r, and then we're going to divide um, the, you know, the, the time that it takes for each. So we're going to divide, we're going to just rewrite this as a fraction over here. Um, we're going to divide this off and move it down here, okay? So divide by two, uh, 2 pi r, or divide by ra the radius. So we're going to do 1 over the radius u, okay? And then this part is this numerator right here. And we're also going to um, we're we're also going to divide by this. Uh, so we're going to divide by uh, we're going to do uh, do one over two pi over t x. So we're going to divide this off on both sides. Okay, so that's how you get that. So you just do a little manipulation, um, and then you get the the equation that you see there. And then this you can think of this as du dt, right? Du dt is the actual velocity of this wheel okay so that's the actual wheel velocity it's not the um you know so this is the velocity of the actual wheel which we know is you know is traveling differently right you know the actual wheel itself um but then the notice that these cancel so 2 pi r over tu is the the, the velocity which is du dt you know you can think of this as du dt and this as d um, x dt right so essentially i could have just led with that and say du dt <clears throat> um, and so that's what we get <clears throat> and then if we divide that off you get du dx right but then du dx has to be um, we know that du dx is um, the radius divided by the radius right so that's what we get and the radius of this big wheel is 10 right this is the radius of x and then this is the radius of u so the radius of u is 5 so if I substitute that in into there I get 2 so that's saying that the ratio of the velocities of these two wheels is 2, which is saying that the wheel, the U wheel, is traveling two times faster than the X wheel, okay? So uh, DU DX is 2. That's saying that DU is traveling twice as fast as DX, okay? Uh, so in other words, the U wheel is rotating two times faster than the uh, X wheel. And so if we... Um, Think of it, if we uh, do this for the other example, comparing y to u, well, that's going to be dy du, right? Because we're doing the derivative of the y wheel with respect to the u wheel. Well, that's the radius of the u wheel divided by the radius of the y wheel. Again, using the same logic as we used earlier. And the radius of the u wheel is 5. The radius of the y wheel is 4. So it's going to be 1.25. So that's saying that the y wheel is rotating 1.25 times faster than the u wheel. Okay, and that's what you see here um, in, um, on the sides. So um, the next thing we want to look at is, well, what's the derivative of the y wheel with respect to the x wheel? So like, how fast is the y wheel moving compared to the x wheel, right? That's what we want to find out. Well, this is where we use the chain rule, okay? So the chain rule is if you multiply those speeds 
um, the two speeds that we were chaining, the, the, the two belts that we're chaining, multiply the speeds of those two belts, well, um, that's going to give you the, the overall speed of, of the, um, you know, comparing the Y wheel to the X wheel. All right. So dy dx. So we're comparing the speed of the y wheel to the speed of the x wheel. That's going to be dy du times du dx. This is using the chain rule, right? The chain rule cr. Um, but we know the du's cancel. That gives us dy dy dx. That's the chain rule, right? But dy du we said was 1.25, right? And du dx we said is two. So we essentially multiply the speeds right, um, that you see as we're chaining from there to there, and as we multiply those speeds, we get the speed of this with respect to this, okay? So it forms sort of like a triangle, right? We got this du dx, we got this dy du, and so this part from here to here is du dx times dy du, multiplying those. And that's the, essentially the chain rule, um, intuitively. So the Y wheel is rotating 2.5 times as fast as the X wheel. All right, so there's the intuitive notion of the chain rule. We did informal proofs, we went over it. So now let's, let's apply this to some examples. So decompose the following composite functions. Then take the derivative of the functions. All right, so uh, we, got some, we got three functions here. Let's go ahead and take the derivative. Now notice these are complex functions, right? This is normally the function one over X, but then this is now replaced with a function the, the, now the denominator is a function of x where it's more complex, right? It's x squared plus x plus 1. So this is a, a composition. This here is just cosine of x, right? But notice that we have um, the squared here, right? So that's going to actually change a few things. So the, this function, which is cosine x squared, is actually equivalent to x squared. So essentially, we're taking the derivative of x squared, but we're replacing x with cosine of x. So it's more complex, right? And now it's a function of x within a function. Um, and then this one here is normally the square root of x, but then now we're replacing this x within the function with another function, which is 5x squared minus 1. So you can see it's a function within a function. So uh, for part A, uh, let u be equal, be equal to g of x, or of x squared plus uh, x plus 1, so we're going to make that equal to u, so now u is a function of x, right? Uh, so u is a, equal to g of x, which is equal to x squared plus x plus 1. So now if we take the derivative, we have to use the chain rule. The uh, function is 1 over u, and u is replaced with this, right? So let's take the derivative. The derivative of 1 over u, well, 1 over u is u to the negative 1. You just remember the power, uh, and then we're going to use a power rule. So bring down the negative 1, and then subtract 1 from the power. So that gives you negative u to the negative second power, which is negative 1 over u squared. Negative exponents, you bring them down to the bottom, right? So um, now we're going to replace, we're going to take the derivative of u. Remember the u is uh, x squared plus x plus 1. Well, that's just the derivative of that is 2x plus 1. And then we're going to multiply them together according to the chain rule, right? Uh, this is my dy du, by the way. So that's my negative 1 over u squared. This is my du dx, right? So we plug that into the chain rule here, here, and that's what we get. And we replace u with x squared plus x plus 1 squared. You just multiply and put them together. This is your final answer. All right, let's look at another one. So, so this is what we got. And uh, remember, we can also differentiate this using the quotient rule. We don't have to use the chain rule here. Um, so we'll show you that uh, here. So we can dif differentiate this using the, the quotient rule. The quotient rule was, la um, you know, last lesson we did uh, product and quotient rules, you know, uh, one of the previous lessons. So you can also use this quotient rule for this one. So if you did, this is the rule, just to kind of remind you, the derivative of one is zero, right? So this goes to zero. And then uh, the derivative of the bottom is two x plus one. We said that this is two x plus one, right? Um, and then over the denominator squared. And if you did that, um, this goes away, so you're left with the same answer, right? This the same answer. But we did it with the chain rule, and we did it with the quotient rule. All right, so for part B, um, remember we said that the this you can think of this as x squared, the function x squared, which now we're going to say it's x is u, so u squared, right? So u is equal to cosine of x. 
um, and then take the derivative of u of, of take the derivative of the function with respect to u well the derivative of this is 2u all right the derivative of cosine is negative sine right and then we're going to multiply those two together according to the chain rule right multiply them together and but remember replace u with cosine of x so replace u with cosine of x okay and this is your answer all right and then um, so again we can also differentiate this using the product rule because cosine of a squared of x is the same thing as cosine of x times cosine of x so if we use the product rule we could that's the product rule um, we did that earlier take the derivative of the first times times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second and the derivative of cosine is negative sine the, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine here so really it's going to be negative sine cosine negative sine cosine which if you combine them gives you negative 2 cosine x cosine x sine x same answer <clears throat> not all functions can be taken derivative of in two ways right this is just examples where you have quote you can use chain rule but you can also use another rule all right so part c um, you're going to have to use a chain rule for this so we're going to say that this replace this with u so that way you can just look at the square root function and then where u is 5x squared minus 1 well the derivative of the square root function remember that you can rewrite the square root as u to the one half power okay this is a, a power this is an exponent u to the one half power and then use the power rule right so bring down the one half subtract one from the the power and that gives you this derivative and then of course you can bring this negative exponent down and that turns into square root because it's one half power is square root and then replace the u with uh, what we said 5x squared minus 1 okay and that is um, that's not the full derivative this is just the derivative with respect to u and then we got to take the derivative of u with respect uh, take the derivative of u with respect to x so we got to take the derivative of this guy which is uh, just 10x using the power rule all right and then multiply those together okay and uh, so multiply this this gives you 10x on the top 10 divided by 2 is 5 so this is your derivative okay so bottom line if you have a derivative if you have a function and you're taking the derivative of it and it's complicated it's complex it's a function within a function because this is the square root function right but then x got replaced with something that's more complex well then treat it as normal right so treat this as a, so i'm going to show you this normally this is how i would normally do it so treat this as a normal function this is to the one half power like treat this as a power rule right so bring the power down subtract one from the power right and that becomes negative one half and then because this is complex right it's not just a regular power rule because you got something complicated on the inside now take the derivative of the inside well, the derivative of the inside is 10x right so there you go um, and then 10 divided by 2 is 5 right so this becomes 5x all right and then this is a negative power so bring it down but then half power means square root and then we got 5x over that and you get the same answer okay so that's how you would normally do it you wouldn't necessarily always break it down into oh this is dy du this is du dx but it's good practice to do that in the beginning just to kind of get the idea and then as you get more um you know adept as do at chaining derivatives you'll be able to chain them with ease okay all right so here's the general power rule so this is kind of like what i was doing earlier i was doing a power rule right so if i have um, u to the n, well, I, I take, the, I, you know, use a power rule, bring the power down, subtract 1, and then take the derivative of the inside. This is the u prime. This is the derivative of the inside. Okay, so this is two ways of seeing the of doing the same thing. The power rule is n u to the n minus 1 times the derivative of the inside is a chain rule. Okay, so this is a good way to looking at it is the derivative of u to the n is n u to the n minus 1, the power rule, times the derivative of the inside. That's called the general power rule. So let's use that here. We got a general power rule here because this is now a function that we can replace with u. So it's u cubed, right? It's, it's complex. It's not just a power rule. It's a complex power rule. So um, we're going to say that we're going to replace this with u, right? And then take the derivative of u. So the derivative of u cubed is, is uh, 3u squared, right? Um, 
So that's you know what I got here, and then times u prime. Well, u prime, the derivative of that is three minus six x using power rules. So we put them together. That's my this is this is my u, uh, which I replaced uh, earlier, and this should say squared, right? So I um, this, there should be a squared here. I forgot to include that because this is three u squared um, times the derivative u prime. Okay, again, this is how I would do it. This is the power rule, so bring the power down, subtract 1. That's going to be squared. Now, this is not you're normally done if this is just a power rule, but this is a complex power rule. So take the derivative of the inside, which is 3 minus 4x. Um, yes, this should be 4 right here. Okay, so if I, do, if I bring this power down, this should be 4, not 6. Sorry about that. Um, so this should be 4 over here. That's a typo. Let me correct that. That's 4. Um, you know, 2 times 2 is 4 here. Um, so it'd be 3 minus 4x. And there's your chain rule. Okay. All right. Uh, so example 3, differentiate the function. So uh, this is a product rule combined with a quotient rule. Or, a, or not quotient rule, chain rule. A product rule combined with a chain rule. So this is your um, your f, this is your g, right? But this g is a chain rule. So if I take the derivative of a g, it's going to be a chain rule. We're going to use a product rule for this. Okay, so, but we're going to convert this um, to x to the one-half power, the square root. And then we're going to do a product rule, okay? Remember the product rule? Uh, the, product, the product rule is fg is equal to f prime g plus fg prime, okay? All right, so we're going to take the derivative. Let's do f prime first, uh, or let's do, um, let's do the product rule. So we're going to do the derivative of this, right, uh, which is 6x. Um, you know, this is the derivative here times the original. So this is my f prime g. This is my f g prime. Not to confuse this f with this f, by the way. Those are different, okay? Um, so yeah, that's what that is. And then we know the derivative of this is 6x right here. And the derivative, uh, now this is where we do the chain rule, right? So we do to, to do the chain rule for that, right? You bring the power down, subtract 1 from the power. So that's going to be 1 half, 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. But since that's a complicated uh, expression on the inside, we take the derivative of that, which is, this is another mini power rule within there, so negative 2x. Okay, so that's how we got this portion here. All right, so there's your product rule with chain mix or chain rule. We're going to simplify a little bit. The 2s cancel out here. Um, let's see here. Is there anything that, um, the six, so yeah, we got that. Um, yeah, so there should be a uh, 3 here, and uh, this 3 didn't cancel out, so I, sh I really should include the 3 there. Okay, so I forgot to include the 3 there, so that's a typo. Um, <clears throat> so we got 3x cubed, the x times x squared is x cubed, and then we got this. Um, so then if we, um, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out, um, in fact, I should pull out, I should really pull out um, a 3x. So let me fix this uh, real quick. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, fixed that. So now we got this 3 over here. Um, so again, this 3 is now there. These canceled out, remember, if you recall. Uh, all right, so now what we're going to do is from this from this um, right side, we're going to pull out. Notice that we have a 3 in common. We got an x in common. And we got a 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half in common between these two, right? So we're going to pull those out, okay? So we're going to pull those out. So that's where I pull out on the end. So that's what I pull out here. Um, but if I do that, well, three go. Um, if I pull a three from six, that's two, right? Um, now notice I pull this out from this. So how do I do that? How do I pull out negative one half from positive one half? Well, um, when you pull something out, you're reducing the power. You're subtracting the powers, right? So, so for example, if I pull out a, a one minus x squared to the negative one half from this, then what does that turn into? Well, that turns into, here, let me um, write it um, over here just to get some more room. So this is where some students, you know, with the algebra, they, you know, they struggle. Um, so if I pull this this out from, from that, 
then what does that turn into? That turns into 1 minus x squared to the, and then since I pulled this out, I have to subtract from this, right? So it's going to be to the 1 half minus negative 1 half. Uh, let me do this over here because I, I'm really running out of room. I'm not, you know, I'm really so big. So let me put it over here. Times, I'm going to do 1 minus x squared. I'm going to take the 1 half minus what I pulled out, right? But what I pulled out is negative 1 half. So this turns into plus, and then 1 half plus 1 half is to the one first power. So this turns into just nothing to the first power, okay? So that's what we got here is that this, this right here transformed to this, okay? That's what I did there. All right, so just in case you can see it. So it turns into really nice because it's just to the first power, so we don't have to worry about the power there. Now, um, now for this, this got, the three got removed from there and the x got removed, so now it's x to the second power, okay? And then we already pulled this out. Remember we pulled this out, so it's not here anymore, so it's just gonna be x squared. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a good little exercise in making sure that you, know, you can manipulate expressions by pulling things out. Uh, factoring out. Um, all right, so now we can distribute this. We get 2 minus 2x squared, and then we can combine these to get negative um, 3x squared. Okay, so that's what we get there. Um, all right, and then uh, we're going to just bring this down as a power um, and then rewrite it as a square root. Okay, so bring this down to the denominator and then do the square root. So that's what we, this is what we got from our final answer. Okay. Again, that's just a matter of simplifying. Simplifying can be the, you know, the most tedious part of this. Not necessarily the rule, but just like simplifying all the stuff at the end. Um, and you don't necessarily have to simplify it, but if you have to match it up to an answer, you may have to simplify it, okay? All right, so here we go. Differentiate the following function. That is a quotient rule combined with a chain rule. This is gonna be a chain rule step whenever we take the derivative of that. Okay, so let's do let's do the you know the quotient rule. Uh, remember the quotient rule: if you have f divided by g, it's um, um, you know f prime g. So it's g f prime minus um, f g prime over g squared. Okay. So that's the rule. I always think of it as low d, low d high minus high d low over low low, right? So, I mean, however way you want to remember, but that's the quotient rule. That's what we're going to do. <clears throat> so we're going to take the derivative, you know, so let me just write it out uh, smaller. So it's um, low d high minus high d low over low low. Okay, so the, this is my g, this is my f prime, right? The, this is like my f and this is like my g in the, in the rule. Um, okay, so using that rule, the derivative of x squared is just 2x. Now the derivative of this, this is a chain rule, right? So we gotta use a chain rule for that. So when we use a chain rule for this, we bring down the power, we subtract one from the power, and then we take the derivative of that Okay, which is uh, 2x, it's just 2x. The derivative of that is 2x. Okay, so that's what we got here. We did a power rule with a uh, chain rule. Um, and then that's what we got using the uh, chain rule and the quotient rule. Again, go back and revisit the uh, you know, quotient rule if you want to you know, refresh your memory on that. Okay, so again, we're going to clean things up a little bit. We're going to pull, I'm going to pull out this you see this, this is two thirds right here. This two and this one third become two thirds. I'm gonna pull out the two thirds. So I'm gonna pull it out here. I'm also gonna pull out an X because we got an X in common, right? So I'm gonna pull that out. I'm also gonna pull out X squared plus four to the negative two thirds power because we have that in common in here. We can pull that out from there as well. If I, so there, that's what I pull out. So that's what we got here. This is what I factored out. Uh, what does this turn into if I pull this out? Well, remember, you have to subtract the negative two-thirds from it. But if you do that, that becomes negative, double negative is positive, and this becomes one, one three-thirds, which is just one. So basically, this will go away, okay? So um, that's what we have here. This is to the first power. 
All right, on the bottom we have, of course, this to the two-thirds power. Remember, this is two-thirds because we gotta square this, right? And so we gotta multiply this times one-third, which is two-thirds. Okay, we gotta square it because of the quotient rule. So that's on the bottom, we pulled stuff out. Um, now, since I pulled out a two-thirds, right? That means, um, so that, also, that means that um, I pulled out a two from here, right? But that means it's missing a it's missing a, a three, right? Because I only pulled out a two from there. So what happens if I pull out one third from the, from two? Like if I factor out one third from two, what does two turn into? Well, two turns into uh, if I pull out one third from that, two turns into um, two times three, right? Because if you think about it, um, you know this will cancel out, giving you two. So same thing. If I pull out a two thirds from two. Oh, uh, a two-thirds. I should have wrote, written two-thirds, not one-third. Sorry. So let me just do, if I pull out two-thirds from two, well, what's that going to turn into? Well, that's going to turn into three because three divided by three is cancels out, and then you get two, right? So this two is going to turn into a three, all right? Uh, so that's why I got that three there. And then I got this to the first power. I already pulled out the x, right? So I'm good there. And this here, I got, uh, I pulled out the two, pulled out the third here, I pulled out the x, but I got the x squared over here. And I already pulled this out. Okay, so again, I know I'm explaining these steps, but you know, I wanna make sure that you understand how I got the steps. So I pulled that out and I, this is what I got. Um, the next thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna distribute. So I got three x squared plus 12. I'm gonna combine these to make two x squared. Um, and then I'm going to pull out the 2 from this expression. I'm going to pull out a 2. Um, and then 12 turns into 6, right? Uh, the 2 that I pulled out, I'm going to multiply that 2 with this 2 to make 4. All right, and this is pretty much as clean as it gets. You can't really do much more than that. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to kind of put them together. I'm going to put the numerators here. Um, I'm going to bring this down. Um, actually, yeah, there's a little more you could do because you can bring this down on the denominator because it's a negative power. So you got here x squared plus 4 to the 2 thirds, right? And then you got to multiply these two together. But remember, when you multiply two of the same base, you have to add the exponents. So that's what we did. 2 thirds plus 2 thirds is 4 thirds. And then we put this in the numerator right here. Okay, so this is what we got. Um, this is really as clean as it gets. You might ask, do I need to really simplify that much? And the answer is it depends. Sometimes you might need to simplify it like that. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you could leave the answer like this. You can just leave it like this, really. Um, and that would be fine for most instances, but sometimes you need to clean up a little bit. Okay. The hardest part of calculus is the algebra. It's not necessarily the calculus itself, right? Uh, it's the algebra. There's a lot of algebra, and you got to be make sure you master it. Your your um, pre-calculus algebra. Um, all right. So, differentiate the functions again. Another example. We know that this is uh, a chain rule because of the complicated inside, uh, and then the chain rule for this it's a complicated inside. Okay. So all we got to do. We know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and we keep this alone. We leave that alone, and then we take the derivative of that right, which is going to be 6x plus 5, or th uh, yeah, it should be 6x, I wrote 3x, because um, if I do the chain, or if I, or if I do the power rule, 3 times 2 is 6, so this should be a 6 right here, so I apologize for that, so times 6x plus 5, uh, and then you can, and that's really it, I mean, you can, you can leave it like that, um, now the derivative for the second part, we know that we can write this as tan x to the 1 half power, um, and then we can do a power rule, right? Bring the power down, subtract 1, and that's what we do over here. And then the derivative of the inside is, um, the derivative of tan is secant squared. Okay, so we re replace that with secant squared. And then we just, since this is a negative power, we bring it down as a denominator and as a square root. All right, and that's really it. Okay, all right, so let's look at another, yet another example. This here is a, is interesting because this is a chain rule within a chain rule. So not only do we have a chain rule with this power rule, when we bring the two down, but with when we take the derivative of the inside, there's also a chain rule there, 
right? So it's interesting. It's a chain rule within a chain rule. So you're doing multiple things, right? When, whenever you have an inside and it gets more complicated on the inside, more complicated on the inside, then you got to work your way from outside to inside, right? Chain rule is working your way from outside to inside and, you know, the innermost, right? From outermost to innermost. Okay, so again, take the bring the power rule. That's the outer part. Take subtract one from the power. That's the outer. Now we got to take the derivative of the inner, right? So we're going to write this as to the one half power, which I do here. But then this is a chain rule here, right? Because I got to do a power rule. So that's what I do over here. But then this is I got to take the I got to do the derivative of that inside, the innermost inside. And that gives me uh, 15 x to the fourth, okay? Uh, this turns into 15 x to the fourth. And that's what I got. I just chained those derivatives together. And of course, I can simplify this. The twos cancel here. Uh, this I can bring down to the bottom as a square root. So that's what I'm going to do down there. Um, and then we're, there you go. That's pretty much all we can do for the most part. We can leave it like that. I mean, we can do a couple things here and there, but for the most part, that's good enough. All right, so for part B, we got another a chain rule within a chain rule, right? So we can rewrite this as this to the fifth, to the third power. We can do a power rule, right? Subtract one from the power. That's what we're going to do. So that's how we got two here for the power. And then we got to take the derivative of that, right? But then the, deri um, the derivative of that, Uh, sorry, we got to take the derivative of this, not not the in, not the innermost yet, the just the regular inside. Take the derivative of that, right? Well, the derivative of that is cosine, right? So this turns into cosine. Sorry. Um, and so we got cosine, and then now we got to take the derivative of the innermost, right? So that's what we do. This. So with the derivative of that is three t squared plus five. Okay, that's where we get the final. Um, derivative. So there's a lot going on here. And we forgot to write the second power. This should be a second power right there. I wrote it in this one, but I forgot to write it there. Okay. Yeah, so it's a long chain of, um, you know, a long product. All right, and then we can, um, if we can simplify this a little further, I mean, we can, we can pull the, um, for example, uh, well, we can move this over here. I mean, there's not really much we can do. We can just move that just to make it look nicer, but you can leave it either way. Okay, so let's look at a final example. Um, this one is a tangent line. So find an equation of the tangent line to the following graph of function. Uh, so when we take the derivative of this, we got to use a chain rule, right? So remember the equation uh, of a tangent of a line is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. But when we convert this to a tangent line, the m is the derivative, right? The, the, the slope is like the derivative um, at x1. Okay, this is like my x1 is pi over 4. So we got to take the derivative, plug in pi over 4. We got to plug in pi over 4 to get the y, right? Um, so let's, let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and do that. So let's do the derivative first. So uh, y prime, this is a uh, 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 chain rule, right? So we're going to write the second out here, then do the product rule. That's what we do here. So track one from the power. So we got this to the first power. Take the derivative of the inside, or take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of that is negative sine. Take the derivative of this inside, and you get three. Okay? So there's your derivatives, negative six cosine three x, sine of three x. And then we can uh, plug in pi over four into that. Um, cosine of 3 pi over 4 is this, sine of 3 pi over 4 is this. Again, this is using the unit circle, so if you need to review the unit circle, please do so. Um, just plugging those in. Unit circle is a big thing when you're doing you know, sine cosine and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so then um, this turns into um, 2, right, negative 2, and then 2 times 2 is 4. And you know, negative 2 fourths is a half, right? So this is negative 1 half, and you know, negative 1 half times negative 6 is 3. So the slope is 3. All right, and then we're going to plug this into the original function. Um, but remember, this is squared. So if I square this, I just get 2 fourths, which is half. All right, so now this we know that this is a half. And we know that this is 3. And this is pi over 4. So all we got to do is plug it into that. So y minus a half equals 3 times x minus pi over 4. 
And then, you know, of course we can distribute and then add the one half to both sides, all that good stuff. We can do all that. If we do that, we get y equals 3x minus 3 power 4 plus 1 half. That's the equation of the tangent line. All right, all right, that is the end of the lesson. I hope you guys found this useful and informative. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.